Hey everyone, my name's Tomato Anus, also known as Haircut is Growing In. I guess this is just going to be haircut updates at the start of every one of these. Uh, and this is the Speedrun Explained Retrospective Series. Uh, today I'm going to be going over a video from December of 2018. Uh, I'll get more into the background of this video in a moment, but this is the video where I watch old videos. This is the series where I watch old videos. Uh, may mainly planning on it being speedrun explained with a few random ones peppered in like speed cucked and pretty much I go through and take notes and break down what I like about them what I didn't like what they do well about explaining things what they don't do well just trying to learn things from revisiting older videos pick up done things that I used to do or stop doing all that kind of stuff if you're watching this video in uh, t today's date is May 19th 2023 if you're watching this video in May of 2024, well, you could have had access to this video a whole year early by heading on over to Patreon. I believe this, as of right now, this series is available to everyone who supports the Patreon on the $6 tier and up. So if you want to see these as they come out and catch up on the backlog of the past year, then head on over to patreon.com slash Um I do one of these a month. Last time we talked about Speed Cucked, uh, the first video we talked about Fallout 4, uh, Speedrun Explained, and this one is Fallout New Vegas, Any Percent Speedrun Explained, and this is kind of where my turn towards starting to make more structured and scripted content began. It was short, shortly after this video uh, was a success that I made the Fallout 3 one, which I was sick when I made that. I remember that. Um, we'll talk about that next month. And then I started to do more edited content. This one is edited like pretty much from here on out. This kind of marks the turning point where everything starts being edited. I think the only two that aren't edited and aren't just VOD highlights, stream highlights are this one which is just a meme video and this one which was an april 1st video april fool's video everything else from here on out is edited content uh before this this is like a lot of just stream highlights stream me talking on stream about something speed run from stream me talking on stream about something etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, oh, this is a banger of a video, though, real quick. How can we not watch this? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Hi, I'm Paul. Legendary video. But yeah, this was kind of the turning point. And uh, I released this video on December 1st, 2018. And I actually have very vivid memories of this day and releasing this. I remember grinding this run out on stream and deciding I wanted to make a video. I don't remember the actual decision too much of deciding to make it into a speedrun explained video like I did with the Fallout 4 one, but um, just trying to remember around that time, I really wanted to grind for a run under 13 minutes. That was a barrier at the time. This is the state of the Fallout New Vegas leaderboard as of December 2018. And as you can see, like very few people had gotten under the 13 minute barrier and I really wanted to do so. So that it was pretty much a grind for that. And once I got kind of past that barrier, I was like, you know, what? I'm going to treat this like I did with the Fallout 4 run that we covered uh, a couple months ago. The Fallout 4 in 39.45. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I think that was it. I think that's the time. But yeah, so grinded this out, and I remember finishing making this video. I remember living in my apartment with my best friend, uh, who's still my best friend. And that night was a Twitch Chicago meetup, which I had never been to before. I had just found out about it, and I decided I was going to go. And I, I finished making this video, and I released it. And after I released it, I went to the Twitch Chicago meetup which um, I, I took like I took like a couple pictures there or took a couple pictures with people I met there. None of them I took. It was like pictures with people who I made friends with throughout the night. And the only picture I know of and have access to is this was from that night. 
Um, this was December 1st, the night I released it. This is Kitty. She, I think, moved to L.A. shortly after, and I'm pretty sure she runs, like, Sonic, like, the Blue Hedgehog, like, that PR Twitter account. I'm pretty sure she is Sonic on Twitter. But that was pretty much, I went to that event. It was at, um, shoot, it was listed on here. It was at Replay in Lincoln Park in Chicago, and just such a cool venue, tons and tons of pinball machines there all free to play for the night tons of hand sanitizer uh even those over a year before covid but went to that event there were a handful of other speed runners there uh at that event i actually met in person someone who uh, i ended up dating for a while who was in the speed running community um and we didn't like they were seeing someone else at the time i was seeing some i started seeing someone else shortly after that event and it was just way down the road that uh, down the road after the event that we like kind of reconnected and ended up dating. But anyways, um, big, it was a big day just because of going to that event, meeting a bunch of people, a bunch of people who I now like are know through the speed running community, all that kind of stuff. Um, I met the crowd control people. Then I believe that's when I met like Jock who, um, I don't, I think dragon Feeney was there. Who's part of that whole crew. Um, I'm trying to think who else was there. Cliffy uh Cliffy was there and Cliffy's a great dude he is like a big Mario Maker streamer anyways went to that event met all these cool people and while I was there like I I remember just checking to see how the video was doing when on my phone um and the video was like low-key blowing up for the time um as you can see the video has a lot of views now but like I had when I typically released videos around this time it would be like after a day, the video would have like a couple thousand views. My subscriber count, I want to say, was somewhere around just under 20,000. Uh, maybe a little less than that, but around there. Uh, and this video, I remember checking it, and it was just like, while I was at the event, the video had only been up a few hours. It was like 5,000 views, 10,000 views, 20,000. Like, and it went up to like, 30 or 40,000 views in the first day, which I had never had happened before. This was the first time I ever, this was the first video of mine that like blew up per se, at least relatively. Uh, so this was like, this video holds a very special place in my heart. Cause this is kind of where the, the run that is my current YouTube career started, you know, um, it was with this video that the channel really started to gain traction, especially with what I do. So this video is, I don't know, this is a really special video to me. I have not watched it since I edited it and finalized it and released it. So this is going to be uh, weird to watch over four years since I've watched it. I honestly cannot remember anything from this video off the top of my head uh, going into it. I'm sure there are jokes like 360ing Mr. House. Um, this was before Infinite Dash as well, so no worry about photosensitivity stuff. Trying to think other things about this video before uh, I start playing. I, oh, I did the, I remember doing this view so people can see the keyboard inputs because this is a run that required a lot of, a uh, lot of, a lot of keyboard stuff. So there's that to watch. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I can't think of too many other things. I got my, my, Notebook all set. I am ready to watch this. So uh, let's begin. Hey guys, this is Tomato Anus, and this is a speed run of Fallout New Vegas Any Percent that I got on my stream earlier today. And I didn't do commentary when I did the run, just so I could go back and do heavy commentary over it later on. Now, as I that's right. So when I wow, uh, things are coming back in my mind now. I don't have the VOD of this on YouTube apparently. I might somewhere deep in my files. Yeah, so I do still have the, the raw video file. Um, wow, I should probably upload this. I want to upload like all my, I have a, a handful of videos that don't have, don't have gameplay only audio versions on my channel uh it's like this one of my old anthology runs there are a couple and i think i still have all of the vods somewhere so i i should i should go through and do that i'm actually going to start the upload of this right now
as I said in the intro of that video, I guess I got, and the date on the video in this file up here, uh, I guess I got and made this video all in one day. That's crazy that, what, what's the date on it or the time? 10.08 a.m. Interesting. Was this a Saturday? This had to have been a Saturday. It was a Saturday. In my mind, for some reason, this day was a Friday, but that makes sense then that I was, I was able to record the run in the morning and then record the commentary and do it all in one day. Uh, a few of these older videos are like that. I know that my speed run to be a pirate is the same thing uh all all in one day which is crazy to think that i was ever at a place where i could do that i'm sure i could do that these days if i had a shorter run like this or fallout 3 or pirate or outer worlds uh and i did the run myself but these days there's the videos have ballooned so much there's so much more editing in them there's so much more proof checking there's a lot more there's just videos are a lot more involved these days so a lot more goes into the explanations, the editing, so they definitely take a lot longer. Uh, videos back in these days were a lot more bare bones. Let's continue. I just said this is an any percent attempt, so if you're not a fan of... Before we continue, before we continue, something else I remember that kind of started me down this whole tangent was... I said that I didn't record... I didn't stream with commentary. I, I remember doing these runs and I remember being just totally uh, having my mic muted and just moving my mic away from my mouth and not focusing on it, like commentary and just doing the run. I believe it was, I don't remember when, but it was sometime after this that I figured out how to use Audacity and uh, voice meter um, and with that was able to make it so that I could route my audio so I could talk on stream, but have audacity record the game sounds. Uh, so I would then be able to have the stream audio copy of the run, edit it, like edit out the pretty much cut out that audio from the stream and edit in the game audio. So then I could have the game audio versions of runs. And then on top of that, make the commentary videos. So then there were three versions of runs, which is pretty standard these days. Like all my videos, I do the comp, the heavy, the speed run explained version, the gameplay version. I always link. Usually I'll link an alternative, but if it's a run that I do myself uh, on stream, I will link, which I haven't done that in forever. I think the last one was speed run to eat a baby. I think that was the last run I did on stream, which was over two years ago now. Um, but if I do stream runs in the future, it's still that same thing. So this is kind of where it started of having multiple. This is where that, you know, the the watershed moment of where that all kind of branches off of. Anyways, let's actually start with this video now. I've been recording 16 minutes and 50 seconds, and I have ne where 12 seconds in. This bodes well. Now, as I just said, this is an any percent attempt. So if you're not a fan of glitching and... These subtitles are auto-generated. Uh, so, yeah, they are will not be 100% accurate as future videos are. In speedruns, then you should go to speedrun.com slash fallout underscore nv. There is a glitchless leaderboard there that there are plenty of runs that you can watch there. This speedrun is done with the Caravan Pack DLC because it gives us a shotgun that we like to use. And this run is also done in Italian because Italian is four seconds faster than English solely because of this intro dialogue with Doc. We're all right, a couple things uh, out the gate that I like and don't, I mostly like uh, is first off, and I talked about this before with the Fallout 4 video. I love videos where I jump straight into the run. It's very hard to do that these days with the amount of prefacing that needs to go into it. Like I said, all the things about alternate versions, um, talking about the runner, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I really do like this, and I think it, it benefits the video a ton. So I'm going to write that down. So I really like the jumping straight into the video. And when I started this retrospective series, I said that I want to take the notes that I'm taking, use the notes that I'm taking, and help improve future videos. Um, and now I am finally getting to uh, the first video working like right now I am finalizing the control all bosses speedrun. 
Uh, I actually, when I started recording, I was just uploading the final, dra- hopefully final draft to send to the runner um, for them to approve and everything. Uh, that is the last video that I ha- had that I was working on that I started before doing this retrospective series. So with the next video that I'm making, it's going to be Super Mario Odyssey. And I feel like that run might lend itself well to jumping straight into the video. So I think that with that one, since that is a video that has like a fresh creative, like I'm beginning the creative process with it after having begun this retrospective series. So I think from the get-go, I'll be able to try and format the video to start because there's a lot to that video, like a lot. I'm very curious how that video is going to turn out. Yeah, I I think that I'll begin to be able to really implement and structure videos with some of these notes now as opposed to before. So we'll we'll see how that Mario Odyssey video turns out and if I'm able to actually implement this jump straight into the run. Something else that I really liked at the start here is the timing of when I mentioned that this run is done in Italian. I'll play that part again right now, but... The timing is so perfect here. I There's no way I did it on perfect at this point because I was not really trying to pace out my commentary with the run yet. I started doing that much later, more so when I was working with other runners. But this was very, very clean with how this came out. I do want to check the audio file and see if... I recorded, I don't think I recorded this all in one take like I did for the Fallout 4 run. The Fallout 4 run I did all off the cuff. Yeah, this one I did not do all off the cuff. I recorded a lot of lines in sections individually, it looks like. Man, this is a mess. So I definitely, like these days, the the pacing of lines is very deliberate and very revised. But this one was definitely not. But it's, like, honestly better than most things I've done lately in terms of... This is, like, so perfect with timing. Uh, And you'll see what I mean right here. Like, we hear the Italian, and right after that, I mention it's in Italian. Like, it just... I don't know. It works perfect in this moment. Plenty of runs that you can watch there. This speedrun is done with the Caravan Pack DLC because it gives us a shotgun that we like to use. And this run is also done in Italian because Italian is four seconds faster than English solely because of this intro dialogue with Doc. We're, typically what we'll do is we'll quick save and quick load to skip through a bunch of dialogues, but we're not able to quick save and quick load through this one because we don't have control over our player character yet. So we play in Italian because this speech in particular is four seconds faster in Italian than English. That all makes sense. That's all pretty solid explanation. I do think it got a little, a little wordy. Uh, again, this video, I believe it was unscripted. Let me double check my drive. Yeah, this video is entirely unscripted. So for it being kind of off the cuff, pretty good explanation. But I do think that that is something that could have been a bit more concise. Now, during this intro part, I'm just mashing enter to get through a couple parts where I have prompts like naming my character and also creating our character. We play as male, doesn't really matter which one, but it's faster just to stay with male. As soon as I stand up, you'll see the screen flash to a loading screen really quickly twice, and that's because I'm quick saving and quick loading twice to skip Doc's dialogues. You'll see me quick save and quick load a lot throughout the run to skip dialogues of NPCs, but we can only do it when they're talking at us and we don't really have our dialogue box up, so we can only skip dialogues with quick saving and quick loading then. So right after... Okay, uh, I'm doing my typical thing of I have some runway here of the game not doing anything, so I'm going to get a lot of lot of information and stuff explained. So explained the pretty much what I was doing in this moment. I explained the quick saving and quick loading. This is all pretty standard for New Vegas and whatnot. Um like I've talked about in the previous videos, like I've done commentary for Fallout 4, New Vegas, and Fallout 3 so, so, so many times. Um, so, like, a lot of these explanations are kind of just canned in my head. So, it'll be once we get to, and it'll be a few months, 
It'll be once we get to the runs where I started collaborating with people, which the first one off the top of my head was Doom 2016 with Seeker, and then Dishonored with Seeker, and then Praise 2017 with Seeker. Um, yeah, it'll be once we get to these where it's like, I do not remember the tech for these. Like, I'll remember them when I hear them, of course, but I could not for the life of you tell, for the life of me, tell you, like, sit me down in front of this and explain stuff. Like, I remember some of the tech and whatnot. And I remember, like, I remember the elevators in this. I remember the weapon wheel BFG glitch. I remember the the goo gun. Sh- like, I remember a lot of stuff in all of the runs. Um, And watching one of these will jog my memory great. But with the Fallout runs in particular, they are, these explanations are so canned in my head that it's hard to kind of break them down and, um, really be be able to process what's going on because like this is this stuff is you know i've said it a million times so after i stand up i walk straight to the vigor tester and there i'll enter in my special stats and the special stats we use for the run are one in strength and four in perception and that's so that we have the special points to bring both endurance and charisma up to 10 the reason why we again great Great timing on that. The I I love when things are synced up with the video. It makes things super easy to follow. And the timing on this one is we're only a minute 40 in. We're a tenth of the way there, a seventh of the way there. But it really good timing on this video so far. Is because with 10 endurance, you reload faster, which is good for a glitch we use. And 10 charisma also gives us more speech points which will help us pass a couple speech checks really early on in the run. Right here when we sit down and talk with Doc Mitchell, we're just going to mash two enter buttons to skip. The game audio is loud. Game audio is definitely a little too loud. It's loud enough to the point where it's distracting, at least I personally feel, which uh, audio balance is something that I don't really... It's not that I put a lot of effort in, into it, but I feel like... It's something that I think is really important and I put a lot of emphasis on, especially in videos today, but it's typically nowadays in, in my process now, um, I'll, I'll kind of do audio balancing at the very, very end, which to me makes sense. I think I'm sure most people do it that way, um, where it's like I kind of ballpark it with like, yeah, this sounds about right right now in the the edit, just kind of put it together real quick so I can hear stuff, hear my commentary clearly. And it's only once I do like my final proof watch edit, which I'm due to do on this upcoming Monday for control. That's when I kind of like really iron out the audio balance. And that's when the audio balance editing comes in, um, adjusting the background audio, adjusting the, or adjusting the game audio, adjusting the background music volume. Um, all that kind of stuff. With this being a run that I put together in one day and edited in Vegas, I am sure that if I looked at it in Vegas, it would literally just be the game. Uh, let's pull it up. I'll tell you right now. It's just going to... I have not opened Vegas in so long, and I'm scared to open it, actually. Uh, it's just going to be the video track, the, the game audio, and then... Uh, the commentary it's just going to be three tracks i would be i would be dumbfounded if there's another another edit or track in this video somewhere oh man i do not miss vegas every time you launch vegas a million pop-ups even though i have the license every time um yeah vegas 14 which i bought on humble bundle in like 2017 2016 um, look at that. N- literally zero edits other than this one cut in the commentary. Um, so yeah, I definitely didn't. Let me see the audio. What's the audio at? I turned, I just cranked the audio down 10 decibels and that was about it. That was all the editing I did. So not really much care. Uh, I made a note that the game, au- the balance is out of whack, man. I have not looked in Sony Vegas in uh, a couple years and I do not miss it. Uh, I do miss the one thing I miss about Vegas is that you can click on a clip like this in the playhead. Wow, that's loud. The uh the playhead moves with 
with it when you just click somewhere. Whereas in Vi in uh, Premiere, you do have to click up in the this playhead region to move the um. Like you have to do this in Premiere and not just here, and that alone was a big adjustment for me. But I'm so used to it now; it's nothing. It's nada. All right, where were we? Yes, in the run. Right here, when we sit down and talk with Doc Mitchell, we're just gonna mash two enter buttons to skip through the Rorschach test as quickly as possible and get to tagging our special skills and also picking our perks. For our skills, we tag guns so that we can kill people more easily because there are a couple people in the run that we need to shoot. And then for our perks, we pick good nature just because it gives us five extra charisma to help with those speech checks that I mentioned earlier. Right when we stand up, we're going to talk with Doc one more time. And then what we'll do is we'll walk into a corner and keep walking and quick save and quick load. And that'll clip us through the wall and it'll spawn us back at the front of his house. You'll see us quick save and quick load the clip a lot throughout the run. And it'll sp All right. A lot happens here. Uh, I wanted to make note of my my word choice for a couple things. This is something that I'm a, a lot more cognizant of than I used to be, and I'm not even sure if it's a good thing or a bad thing uh, to be cognizant of in particular. But uh, as you could like, you'll I use we and were a lot instead of I, and this is something that I really carried through my videos. It's just a very natural way of speaking to me, and I think it makes sense. Like when. The viewer is along for the ride, like, yeah, we need to do this, we need to do this, we need to do this. It's not, also, it's not just me who do, does these runs, it's other people. Um, so, it, to me, it makes sense. We, we need to, we need to shoot some people, we're going to have to do this. I have gotten comments over this. Uh, there are people who, and I didn't know these people even existed. There, there are a bunch of people on YouTube who comment whenever you use we like that which i believe it's called the royal we um using we is kind of a collective term like that um or at least in this tense sense and it's something that like has made me check how i use and structure sentences so like i used to use we a lot and i used to say the name of the runner a lot a lot, a lot. I think the biggest example of that is the Bloodborne video. I say Pinkman a million, million times to the point where even Pinkman, when we were going through the videos, like, hey, it seems like you see my name a lot in this section. Um, that's going to be a rough watch. But I think it was after that video where I really correct, because I got so many comments, I'm like, okay, so this is actually a thing now. I'm saying the name way too much. Um, so, like, these days... I use pronouns a ton, um, and I really try and cut down on we. I try and I try and keep it to he is going to do this, they are going to do this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but my default go to is always we. We're going to do this. We're going to do that, and people would then come again. And I'm not I'm not sure if these are these comments are even worth giving any heed to, any weight to. But comments being like, why are you saying we're doing it? It's this person who's doing it. This runner's doing it. Uh, which I think it's a pedantic comment and doesn't really... People get the point. Uh, to me, saying we feels very natural. But so does what I do now. And it also stops those comments. So it's kind of why I do it. And then for our perks, we pick good natured. Just So yeah, like we pick good natured. So that's just something to keep a, an ear out for. Lots of we's. And again, I'm not even sure if that's particularly good or bad. So, like, I made a note that I use we a lot in it. And I was like, good, bad, question mark? Not sure. Because it gives us five extra charisma to help with those speech checks that I mentioned earlier. Right when we stand up, we're going to talk with Doc one more time. And then what we'll do is we'll walk into a corner and keep walking and quick save and quick load. And that'll clip us through the wall and it'll spawn us back at the front of his house. You'll see us quick save and quick load the clip a lot throughout the run. As soon as we exit his house, we're going to drop unnecessary items. This is... This something just happened that, in my opinion, is like the cardinal sin of my older videos is something happens. And then I say after the fact what happened and I say it not only after the fact, but it's tensed after the fact where I say we're going to do we're going to drop unnecessary items, but we've already done that. And to me, that's like two cardinal sins in one, which, again, as I've talked about nowadays with my videos, I record um, right now, my current 
method of doing things is I'll record like a batch of lines around a minute or so. And then I'll see how all the lines sync up and edit them as needed. Um, for a long time, I did it line by line. I would record a line, render the audio, see how it syncs up, record the next line. Rend- but I found that doing batches of like a minute or so, adjusting that minute, adjusting the lines in that minute till they sync up well, I've, I find that to be more uh, time efficient. So, um, yeah, I, I clearly was not doing it at this point, the syncing up. I believe I started doing that. It was like, it was maybe around the Prey video with Seeker, maybe a little later than that. Um, it was around that time span that I really started to focus on that. I think it was a little after the Prey video, but around that time that I really started to focus on making sure the tenses was right because I think that's so important. I think that... That is something that is so, so important for uh, the literacy of these videos. Let's equip our shotgun and fast travel to Good Springs, and then we're going to stop hop our way over to the general store and talk to Chet. I'll explain stop hopping later on, I just don't really have the time to explain it at this second. Uh, I get what I... This is a bad habit that I have even now. So on my end of making these videos, the most valuable resource I have in a video is time that when I started doing the pauses with the Stardew Valley video that kind of like solved a lot of issues I was having because explaining everything in the correct amount of time even to this day is like the big the big thing about these videos I the way I think about these videos is less as a project more as a puzzle because it's it's a puzzle in ways it's like I'm like yeah I'm making the video but I think about it more as a puzzle where it's like I'm trying to find the most efficient and best way to explain this given the time that I have with the time allotted being the length of the run. So like once a video is finished, I consider it to be like a solve. Like, I, OK, I've solved that. Not that I not I'm not saying solved as in, oh, I figured out the best way to explain this because that's not true. Uh, it's solved as in, OK, I. I've explained everything I could to the extent that I find suitable in that amount of time. I found the way to arrange everything so that things make sense. Um, I think of it as solved that way, you know? Um, And right here I said, I think, I didn't say I think. I I personally think that saying that mentioning something and explaining it later is totally fine and acceptable. Mentioning something and saying you're going to explain it later, fine. These days, I would, I should, I should, would throw a note on screen saying like "to be explained later." Stop hopping. What I find particularly egregious about this is, I said, I don't. I'll explain stop hopping later. I don't really have the time to explain it at this second. That. Like, I get that I'm adding context to the commentary for people in the comments so that I didn't get comments saying, well, why didn't you explain it then? And a lot of what I did in my videos at this time was more preventative for comments. Um, I dealt with a shit ton of really annoying, ignorant comments about speedruns and commentary and stuff. I mean... Even to this day, I get ignorant comments of people like, why are you talking so much? It's like, sorry, didn't know I couldn't talk in a YouTube video. Didn't know, sorry, I, I thought, that, I didn't know that every uh, every speed run is not allowed to have commentary over it and that you're here just for the gameplay. Part of the reason why I do the whole, here's all of the different reasons, oh, here's all the different versions of this run you could watch because to, uh, like, to nip all those comments in the bud. Uh, and I was definitely trying to nip comments in the bud with this line. These days, and I made a note, like, I didn't think of doing notes on screen at this point. I didn't think of doing notes on screen for a long time. Not until I made my Mirror's Edge video, I believe. Um, and it's just, text on screen solves so much if you don't abuse it. And I, I'm just really nervous that I'm getting to the point with other videos right now that um, I'm abusing how much text I put on screen. But I guess we'll find out. A long time from now how uh, how I feel about the text on screen in my current videos but like th- throwing on screen to be explained later stop hopping buys me like how much time is this that I lose to chat I'll explain stop hopping later on I just don't really have the time to explain it at this second 
So what? Five seconds. It was from 236 to 241. Five seconds I spent on that line. Five seconds is like so much time. I can't even begin to stress how on my end, if I have like five extra seconds in the middle of a video, I'm like, that is such a score. That is so much extra time to explain something. So much extra time. So that's, I find that a particularly egregious because I've really come to value time as, uh, as something that I'm working against in these videos. When we shop with Chet, we're gonna buy some ammo for a 357 revolver. Unluckily, he didn't spawn with one, but it's more unlucky for Chet because we're gonna have to kill him and take the one that's. Again, this this goes back to what I just said about the, like things syncing up. Um, with me saying like we're gonna drop all this shit. This is so. I love that like I love that line, and it's like again done been done a million times i've done this line a million times other runners a million times but it's like it's just so good like unluckily for chet he didn't have one boom kill him that right there is just so natural comedy and the fact that like it's being talked about after the fact just lessens it you know um so again just syncing up it's not only explanations that law that's that are lost but a lot of comedy is lost because again, comedy is all about timing. Bonds on his body. Well, I don't think I ever said again. Or I don't think I ever said that to begin with. Actually, the comedy is comedy is all about timing. So this was bad comedic timing. Fawn with one, but it's more unlucky for Chet because we're gonna have to kill him and take the one. Again, we're gonna have to kill him. Chet's been dead. His corpse is uh cold now. That spawns on his body. Maybe not cold. As well as any ammo that's on his body. Once we exit the general store, we immediately bind the 357 revolver as well as the shotgun, and we begin doing a glitch called reload dashing. Now, reload See, dashing we're like, is the thing. I'm explaining things 30 seconds too late. If I'd only be explaining them 25 seconds too late if I didn't have that one line. Um, but it's it's fine that it's being explained not right when it starts, right? It's totally fine that I'm explaining it now because this goes on for a while, the reload dashing. But the thing that kind of ruins it for me then is the tenses because I'm saying we're going to do all this. We're going to do all this. We're going to do all this. I'm doing it. I'm already doing it. I should be saying I'm reload dashing. I'm doing this by doing this. I, I do this. Reload dashing is done by doing this. Not I'm going to reload dash by doing this and then I'm going to do this. It should be. I am reload dashing by doing this. You, you know, it's the tenses are so important. And I feel like that's something that's really overlooked is the tensing. It's one of those things where it's when you don't have proper, proper tenses on all your words in one of these explain videos. It's one of those things that you don't notice until it's there. You know, like you don't know with my current videos, I don't even when I am reviewing them, when I'm doing my proof watch, um, when I'm doing my like my proof watch of the video, I don't even think about it because I, I bake that into the creation process now. But like when I'm watching these videos now where I don't do that, it is so just it's like my my I'm getting yanked out of my body, you know? Like, it is just so, like, whoa. Like, you know, I'm getting yanked out of the viewing experience because it's so jarring to me. Because I feel that that is so, so, so important is uh, syncing up your commentary to the gameplay. Ask this way to move across the map in Fallout New Vegas. The way you do reload dashing is by having a gun that has a one bullet at a time reload animation like the revolver. What you do is you hold W the entire time so you keep walking forward. You have to be on the ground for this. You can't do it while you're in the air. And you press the button to swap your ammo twice. And right after that, you press your button to pull up your inventory and also click on the mouse. Because what this will do is it'll interrupt the reload animation. And if you unequip the gun and you keep holding W once you put away your pit boy the game will for some reason slingshot you forward. So this is what we do to pretty much move across the map. There are I, I don't think that explanation is horrible. Um, I think that this, it could have been better and it's most, it mostly suffers from the fact that this video is unscripted. Like, like I showed up in audacity earlier. Um, 
it is just me riffing it. And again, it it's serviceable. It's serviceable. 24,000 people and there, that many views. It's clearly a serviceable explanation. But it's not... It's something that is so easily fixed by writing these lines down before I say them. You know? Because that could be so easily rearranged. Or have lines combined to be more singular thoughts. Or, like, for example, the the part that kind of initially... Took me. I'll I'll go through this part and talk about how I would reward it now. By having a gun that has a one bullet at a time reload animation like the revolver. Okay. What you do is you hold W the entire time, so you keep walking forward. You uh-huh. have to be on the ground for this. You can't do it. While- that line right there. You have to be that. Take cut that. Move it. Get rid of that right there. That just completely derails. I'm I'm adding rules in the middle of an explanation and adding rules just gives the viewer more things to think about when they should be focusing on learning this it just throwing rules and exceptions and stuff like that in the middle of an explanation it just gives again gives the viewer way too much to focus on so take that part move it what you do is you hold w the entire time so you keep walking forward you have to be on the ground for this you can't do it while you're in the air even that line sounds edited in I would pull up of the Vegas and the Audacity again, but it, you can just hear it. You can hear the entire time, so you keep walking forward. You have to be on the ground for this. You can't do it while you're in the air. And you press the button to swap your ammo twice. And right after that, you press your button to pull up your inventory and also... I, I don't know what I was thinking. All right, let me focus on... You're in the air. And you press the button to swap your ammo twice. And right after that, you press your button to pull up your inventory and also click on the mouse. Because what this will do is it'll interrupt the reload animation. And if you unequip the gun and you keep holding W once you put away your pit boy, the game will for some reason slingshot you forward. So this is what we do to pretty much move across the map. There are a couple... Again, technically a correct explanation would have benefited immensely from writing that down beforehand and kind of refining it even a little bit because it's like pressing the button to do this pressing the button to do this pressing the button to do this and it's just like a lot of a lot of word salad being thrown at the viewer that just makes it more difficult to focus on what is actually being said a lot of word salad there and it's not even word salad in a sense of using like like flowery like using big complicated words it's just a lot of unnecessary words there that make it really hard for the viewer to really follow what's going on downsides to this like the game has a tendency to crash when you do this since it's really not intended another thing that happens a lot throughout the run because of reload dashing is because you're hitting objects at high speed you often get sent super high up into the air so we try to remediate a question i would have as a viewer right now and we'll see if I address it. But a question I would have is, where are we reload dashing to? Why are we reload dashing? What are you actually doing? This is where, like I said, the pauses are so valuable. Because nowadays I would pause, explain the tech, explain the reload dashing, and then play the section out and explain what I'm doing with the reload dashing. You know, the all of this time is spent explaining the tech and I'm not explaining what I'm using the tech for. It just wrote down uh, pretty much what I just said. Make sure to focus both on explaining tech and what you're using tech for, e.g. spend so much time explaining reload dashing, but not at all what is being accomplished with it. And I bet within the next 20 seconds going to uh, going to mention what. I was doing with reload dashing, but it's not enough. It's not enough to retroactively explain things like that. Mediate that by quick saving and quick loading while we're flying up. You can use quick saving and quick loading to completely break your momentum. So it allows for you to stop flying way up in the air. And it also allows for you to break great falls that would normally kill you. Something else that I'm, I'm not really going to comment, but just address is of course the editing on the audio isn't necessarily as tight. The pronunciation of things isn't necessarily as clean. Uh, like I stumbled briefly over a Stop word here. Way up. 
quick saving and quick loading to completely buy or is it quick saving and quick loading right there like I, I stumbled over quick saving started saying quick loading and then corrected myself like not really going to be commenting on things like that because that's just kind of something that's been developed over time like I've gotten better at pacing the commentary uh, making sure there's no mistakes in there like that so I can't really can't really nitpick myself for doing that because you know that's stuff that's been figured out and improved upon with time as I've gotten better at this. Uh, it's it's mostly the how I'm explaining things that I'm looking at to take have takeaways from. I'm not gonna write down a note about wow you sucked at reading uh, you sucked at explaining stuff in this um, or you sucked at saying words without fumbling over them because that's I can't actually do anything with a note like that. For flying up, you can use quick saving and quick loading to completely break your momentum. So it allows for you to stop flying way up in the air, and it also allows for you to break great falls that would normally kill you. As we travel across New Vegas, our first stop was the Hidden Valley, which we need later on to meet the brother. What did I say? In the next 20 seconds? And when was that at? Like 3.50? Look at that, 20 seconds later. And then we make a beeline towards Black Mountain Radio because we need that later to power up a substation. From there, we just make a beeline straight to the monorail and we launch ourselves off of a rock. That'll send us up in the air, and then we can land on the monorail and take the monorail into New Vegas. Again, because now the viewer's like, okay, I hear what you're saying, and I'm thinking back to w when that happened. Oh, yeah, you did launch off a rock, but their brain power is going to recall now. Their brain power is not going to... Their brain power is not going to processing what's actually going on on screen they are looking at what's going on hearing what's being said connecting what's being said to what has happened visually and it's just it's a recipe for disaster vegas once we're off the monorail all we have to do is walk through here and then we can clip through this wall and then we access the store and we're in new vegas once we're actually in New Vegas proper, the first thing that we need to do is go and talk to the White Glove Society and the Ultralux. The reason why we go to the Ultralux right away is because we're doing the Yes Man ending. And part of the Yes Man ending is you meet all the smaller factions like the White Glove Society and the Omertas. And you tell Yes Man that you, you pretty much don't want them harmed. So we need to at least talk to everyone once except for the Great Cons and Brotherhood, which you'll see what we do later with them. But once we're inside the Ultralux, we're going to stop hop again to get back to Mortimer quickly and then talk to him real quick. And stop hopping is a glitch where you hold W and you jump. And right when you're about to land, you let go of W and flick your camera around and jump again. And you get a ton of momentum from doing this. So if you time it perfectly, you can change it together several jumps and move faster than normal. So that's what stop hopping is. It's similar to bunny hopping, but it's not bunny hopping. Right when we leave the Ultralux, what we're going to do is reload dash over to the tops. and So... I think that right here is a moment where, um, let me write this down first. So right here, right here, I'm going to let this line play and then talk about what my takeaway from it was. And you get a ton of momentum from doing this. So if you time it perfectly, you can change it together several jumps and move faster than normal. So right here, this line is. that's it's coming similar out. to bunny hopping, but it's hey, not bunny hopping. Benvenu. Right when we leave the Ultralux, what we're going to do is reload dash over to the tops. And Okay, so I say right when we leave the Ultra Dex, Ultralux, what we're going to do is reload dash over to the tops. That way we can kind of... And that way, like, pretty much what I'm saying... Right when we leave the, the Ultralux, we reload dash over to the tops for X, Y, Z reason. And what I wrote is, <laughs> it's really funny to word it this way. Resp you can respect the viewer a bit. And I even wrote it in the notes, LOL. Because, like, of course I respect the viewer. But it's just, like, funny to write that. Um, but I don't need to spell out every little thing. And I think this is something that I still actively do. Um, in regards to, I still spell out every little thing, uh, but I think I can adjust that. And I think that this is an important note. Um, like I said, we need to dash to the tops now for X, Y, Z reason. It's obvious we dashed to the tops. Any viewer would see that we did that. It's obvious we left the Ultralux cause we are no longer in the Ultralux. It's obvious we're now in a different place.
Maybe you don't know what's the tops, but you can just say, we're now at the tops because X, Y, and Z. Not, we need to dash to the tops now for X, Y, and Z. It's just, we're now at the tops because X, Y, Z. And again, it's just, it's simpler. It is a bit easy, like, you know, it's easier to understand, less word salad. Uh, it respects the viewer a bit because, yeah, we can we can see we're in the tops now. Don't We don't need to be told we're going to dash over because whatever. Progress the main quest by meeting Benny and everything. The first thing we're going to do in here is talk to Swank and pass a couple of speech checks to get Benny's sweet key. And then we're going to level up three times and we're going to level up survival to 45 so we can take the travel light perk in a minute. And then what we're going to do from now on through the run is level speech every time as high as it can go so that we can pass speech checks at the end of the run. And other than that, level ups don't matter, we just dump them into anything, but for the time being, every level up goes into speech. Once I'm done leveling up, I'm going to walk over to Benny and demonstrate my MA aim, and then I'm going to loot his body to get the platinum chip off of him. Now that I have the platinum chip... I like the self-deprecating humor. I, I mean, <laughs> if you guys have heard how I introduce myself, uh, self-deprecating humor, good. I like stuff like that, it injects a bit more personality into the video, and... That's something that, like, long term I've been trying to do is have the videos be more, less encyc encyclopedic and more, hey, it's me, Tomato Wayne, is here to tell you about this run. You know, have it be more, uh, have it be more personal, have it be more personality driven, the explanations. Uh, and I, I like injecting stuff like that into there. Uh, demonstrate my NA aim. Uh, example, way later. W more recent video portal 2 by the way hi to my stepdad hi john uh stuff like that so yep i'm gonna make shout out john again you won't john you won't watch this video because it's on patreon and you don't support me on patreon shame on you um but shout out to john again make my way to his sweep by reload dashing to the elevator and then clipping through a wall and once i'm in here i'm going to talk to yes man just enough to progress the main quest and then also in order to learn what tribes i need to talk to in order to finish his main quest Once I'm done talking to Yes Man, I'm going to leave Benny's suite. And once I'm out of here, I'll reload Dash a couple of, uh... A lot of uses of gonna. A lot of gunnas. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. It's never, I did that. I'm doing that. I do this. It's a lot of, I'm gunnas. The Tops Goons, whatever they're called. And once I'm out of the elevator... <laughs> I will clip through this wall and spawn right at the entrance to the top so I can move. That was, I, I, I know that, I don't think I intended that to be a joke, but I just find that line really funny. Past the top's goons of whatever they're called. Like, that's, I like that line a lot. Once I'm outside, I'll equip my revolver again and reload dash to the other side of the New Vegas Strip, where I will enter the Lucky 38 by talking to Victor. There's also, and again, this is something that I'm not going to make a note on because it's something that's just, it was a, it's a skill more that I've developed and it's not really anything I can comment on. It's just, there's zero urgency to the commentary. Zero urgency. Once I not, talk. not that I need to be like, we're going to do the, not, not that there needs to be urgency, like in the portal out of bounds speed run, but just watching this run, there are so many little things. Like, I could have explained that. I could have explained that. I could have given context for that. There was time for that. There was time for that. It just, yeah, it's just, my mind goes to that now. It's just like, oh, it's all about time management. It's all about time management with these videos. And, yeah. Like, here. This is what made me elevator, say it here was... I will clip through the... Um... Once I go outside, I I strafe. Wow, I'm jumping all. I strafe wide right here to avoid specifically those guys who are there. Uh, and there's time here to say that. There's time here. I I take a wide berth to avoid this and dash. I take a wide berth to avoid NPCs who are trying to talk to me and dash up to the gate. Once I'm outside, I'll equip my revolver again and reload dash to... I don't need to say I'm going to equip the revolver again. I can just say reload dashing because, again, it's inherent. You can respect the viewer a bit. Other side of the New Vegas Strip, where I will enter the Lucky 38 by talking to Victor. 
Once I've talked to Victor, I can enter the lucky 38 and talk to in lots of repetition. I'm going to talk to Victor. Talks to Victor. Now that I've talked to Victor, I can just go, I'm going to talk to Victor. Talks to Victor. Now, like, inside the Lucky 38, them again on the inside and take the elevator up to the penthouse. As soon as I spawn in the penthouse, I'm going to jump back into the left and then walk backwards and quick save, quick load to clip through this wall. Again, I'm going to do this as I'm doing it. I could just say, once I'm in the penthouse, I jump back into the left and clip through the wall and then level up speech to 100, drop down, do third person interact. Like and I'm going to be doing a glitch called third person interaction, which is where you enter third person and kind of maneuver the camera to a point where you can interact with items on the other side so that I can access this terminal that... I, you don't even get to see third person inter like this is the only time third person interact is used in the run and w it's done before it's even explained which is where you enter third person and kind of maneuver the camera to a point where you can interact with items on the other side so that I can access this terminal that requires the platinum chip to access and I'll take this to the control room which is where Mr. House's body is so I'll unseal his chamber and then pop him once with a shotgun and now he's dead. I don't even make jokes about talk. Wow. Huh. My prediction before the video was wrong of uh, making jokes about talk like 360ing house and stuff. Yes, man can now take over the lucky 38. I'll clip through this wall, stop hop a couple times, and clip through this wall in order That's to. That's good. That right there is exactly what I've been talking about. This part's really good. Now he's dead. So, yes, man can now take over the lucky 38. I'll clip through this wall, stop, hop a couple times, and clip through this wall. In order like, just right there, super simple. Keep it simple, stupid. To take the stairs up to the elevator and take this back down to the casino level. And allow for me to, ex to exit the Lucky 38. Now, now my speech is up to 100, so every time I level up, I'm just going to dump him into the first thing I see. Once I'm outside, I need to talk to this NCR trooper, otherwise the game will softlock with some weird dialogue thing right here. But we're going to dash over to the Gamora and talk to the Omerta hey, thug in Sula. the lobby and say, never mind, I'll be back. And that right there is enough to constitute meeting the Omertas, so later on we can tell Yes Man to spare them. But now we're going to begin our quest to go and meet all... I'm talking about, like, now I'm getting into talking about the quests and meeting the tribes and everything, and I want to give a shout-out to Tiffany Speedruns. She did a run of New Vegas any percent, when was it 2017 at AGDQ somewhere around there maybe SGDQ 2017 uh and her run she talks about like oh uh we do need to talk to the tribe and we've passed judgment on them that's enough to know that we can spare them all that kind of stuff and I'm just like fuck I really it's like I do that a lot with New Vegas now it's just like yeah I've never framed it that way in my head but that is what we're doing in the speed run so sh shout out to her uh I, I really like how that was framed and I frame it myself that way now too. The faction, so what we have left is the Boomers, the Brotherhood, and the Great Cons. So for the Boomers, all we have to do is dash to leave West Side and the Strip, and once we're outside, we're just gonna make a beeline towards Nellis Air Force Base. With reload dashes, you can actually curve the trajectory of some of them by flicking your mouse to the side. So if you watch the hand cam in the top right, you'll see my mouse hand sometimes flick really hard to the left or the right, and that's because I'm trying to curve my reload dashes. Unfortunately here, we did get caught by George. You so I liked Conflicted. Conflicted right now. With reload dashes, you can actually curve the trajectory of some of them by flicking your mouse to the side. So if you watch the hand cam... I like the inclusion of factoids like this, like, way after the fact, you know? Like, you don't have to explain everything with everything up front at once. I don't need to introduce all the levels and layers of reload dashing when I'm first explaining it. I can leave things for later when they're applicable. The, and I like, I like the pacing of this, and I like the timing of including that now. I just feel like I chose the wrong spot to include it. Like, I know I just said I like where I included it, but it's just like bump it forward or back to like with somewhere in the same minute time span to where I actually do it. Because I say if you watch the camera, you'll you can see that sometimes and it's really bad to do stuff like at least in my opinion, um, I get really frustrated with myself when I do stuff like that. And then I like I'm like, huh? And I go to look and I'm watching this and then it doesn't happen. It's like, hey, by the way. 
we're whale watching. There's whales all the time right there. And then you sit there for 20 minutes and nothing happens. And you're like, well, okay. Cam in the top like, right, you'll see my mouse hand sometimes flick really hard to the left or the right. And that's because I'm trying to curve my reload dashes. So what I just did was I asked the viewer or told the viewer, hey, if you watch up here, you can see something. <laughs> but it's not going to happen anytime soon. So for the rest of the video, keep an eye up here uh, to see that. And so you're going to be distracted away from this because now you're looking at this. So unfortunately, you're I don't like that. Caught by George. You want to try and stray to the left and not get caught by him. But sometimes he is able to just stop you in such a fashion that would cause irreversible whiplash. But unfortunately, he did catch us. But that's no big deal. It's only a couple seconds lost. But once we get... I did like, I really liked the delivery of that. And such a. Th you can tell that it's unscripted, and I like that. To not get caught by him, but sometimes he is able to just stop you in such a fashion that would cause irreversible whiplash, but. I like that. Like, that, that's. I don't know if quaint is the right word. That's good. I like that. Th that's the pros of, um,. That's one of the big pros of unscripted is you get, at least I personally feel like you, you have moments like that. Um, and like, I guess I can script that script things to sound unscripted, but unfortunately he did catch us, but that's no big deal. It's only a couple seconds lost, but once we get up to this gate, we're going to talk and make a note. I really like that. I don't know why that, but that really sticks out. That reminds me of, he did catch that reminds me of. The old tomato anus, you know? Just, but that's no big deal. It's only a couple seconds lost. But once we get up to this gate, we're going to talk to the boomer guard real quick and then Raquel. And they'll let us into Nellis Air Force Base so we can talk with Pearl. After we've talked with Pearl, that constitutes meeting the boomers for Yes Man's quest line. And then we can just fast travel to Hidden Valley, which we discovered near the start of the run, where we will meet the Brotherhood of Steel. Lucky for us, the Brotherhood of Steel doesn't take too much to get to know. All you really have to do is open this door, take out a gun, and once they open their door, you just shoot them once. And then you can just clip out of this wall and leave. And that's all you need to do to meet the Brotherhood of Steel enough to constitute whether or not they need to survive. That's After like, that, we'll the wording of that is kind of what I was talking about with Tiffany earlier and how she uh, phrased things. Like, yeah, we, we shot them once, we can pass judgment on them. Just fast travel to Good Springs, and then what we'll do is we'll reload dash our way to the Red Rock Canyon to meet the Great Cons. One thing that you may have noticed throughout the run is that my timer pauses every time we're at a load screen. This is because we utilize what's called a load remover for PC runs, and this pretty much is a component inside of our timer that reads the game's states for markers that indicate the game's at a load screen. Every time the game is at a load screen, the timer automatically pauses. What this does is it only times our in-game time for our speedrun so that people with slower PCs and long load screens can accurately compare their time to people with better PCs. I do not miss having to explain load removers every video. We're going to hear a lot of load remover explanations over the next few months. And I do not miss that. I do not miss having to include it. I talked about this when going over the Fallout 4 video. I do think there's value in having the splits shown. But the downside being having to explain load removers. Um, but you could totally just have a note that pops in defining it. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think that that might be something that I go, I move forward with. I So Mario Odyssey is coming up. Um... The run after that is Alien Isolation, and I'm pretty sure for Alien Isolation we are doing no overlays. Or that runner actually has, um, they have overlays, but they're like for inputs and whatnot. So yeah, that for that one, um, Mario Odyssey, we don't have a timer. Alien Isolation, maybe there will be a timer, we will see. I talked to that runner about overlay and I reached out to that runner after having done the fallout four notes and making the note about there's actually benefit to including the, the timer. So maybe we will include the timer in that one. 
it adds a little bit of stakes and everything. Um, but it, a big thing that it comes down to is segmenting because it is not necessarily easy to segment a live split timer. Um, I've tried, I did a, a segmented race with Gingenia in like 2017, maybe late 2017, mid 27. It was like 2017, maybe 28. I think it was 2017. I did a segmented run race with Gingenia and that was the only time I've ever tried segmenting live split. And it was horrible. It was so difficult. Um, maybe there's a way to do it, and I just didn't think of it then. But uh, it's not easy to segment live split and have it look like a normal timer. Just I won't go into it, but just because of the way live split works, um, yeah, it's just difficult. So that's the hard part with getting a uh, having runs these days include timers is that it we segment most of the we segment most of the runs on the channel so it's tough it's tough i'd like to include timers more now now with the great cons we actually don't need to speak with anyone there's a big trigger in the middle of this open area right here and if you stand in it and quick save and quick load a couple times that'll constitute meeting the great cons and then you can just fast travel to the strip north gate once we're here, we now need to go and talk to Yes Man and tell him we've met everyone and also let him know we can meet him up in the Lucky 38, so I'm going to reload dash over to him, go through all of our dialogue and say, hey, we're good to go. Not much Once going on. the elevator oh, up to the penthouse floor, we'll talk to Yes Man, and this will pretty much upload him into Mr. House's computer, and he'll take no. control of the strip. Well, this part's gonna be loud. This part's always really loud. There we go. Again, this kind of this is doing good, doing. Uh, doing well what I talked about earlier like respecting the viewer um, a lot of this stuff just doesn't need to be said and I'm letting it not so be said once we talk to yes man after he's uploaded into house's mainframe or whatever we and of course as soon as I say that then I repeat everything I just said so we could just say now that he's in house's mainframe this long demonstration but lucky for us we can go to this elevator and use a combination of quick save quick load and waiting one hour at a time to skip all of Yes Man's individual lines and then third person interact with the elevator. Mm, I forgot the that this was third person interact. And then take the elevator again back to the penthouse and it'll skip this entire demonstration and save a whole lot of time. And now once we're back in the presidential suite, we need to go and talk to Yes Man again. That's a now goof. we're back in the presidential suite. Uh, just a, a mistake that I made. You go to the presidential suite to be able to... Because you can't go straight to the penthouse. And from the presidential suite, you go to the penthouse, which is where Yes Man is. And I say, now that we're back in the presidential suite, but we're back in the penthouse. Wow. Unwatchable. And now once we're back in the presidential suite, we need to go and talk to Yes Man again. And he'll say, more or less, hey, you know Kimball's going to be at the dam. And we say, we don't care about Kimball. And that skips an entire quest with President Kimball being at the dam. And now all we have to do is go and power a substation. So lucky for us, we discovered Black Mountain already. And Black Mountain is actually right by the substation that we need to power. I believe it's El Dorado. So we're just going to fast travel to Black Mountain. And then we're going to reload dash to El Dorado substation. And there we're going to power the substation. And then we'll fast travel back to Yes Man and talk to him. And then head on over to Hoover Dam. It's not much to comment on in this part. I will comment yes, that man. this right here, fall. I was just pointing at the screen. This, falling onto this part right here, 
Um, we don't do it anymore because we discover the El Dorado substation as part of infinite dashing. This quick save quick load here to break your fall always gave me a bit of trouble. And I always made sure to quick save to like earlier rather than later because it's sloping downwards. Like this part is higher up than this part. So it was really easy to miss misjudge how high up you are and quick save quick load too late and break your legs and just mess up your run so and talk to him like that that right there looked really close like i could see this counting his broken legs how close i am to the ground right here and talk to him and then head on over to hoover dam Unfortunately, we got caught by old Ben here. Same deal as George. He'll randomly talk to you, so ideally we don't talk to him. But right here, we will curve a reload dash and luckily avoid Volpace, who is part of the... Uh, Legion and he wants to talk to you really badly. So now that we're at Hoover Dam, normally you'd have to go through an entire sequence here fighting off a bunch of Legionnaires and going through the Hoover Dam itself, but Lucky for us with reload dashing, all we have to do is kind of launch ourselves over this middle gate area and then we can land perfectly fine on the other side, everything is normal. There's the Securitrons here and everything, but we can just dash over to the Legate camp and there we can end the game. Once we're inside, all we're going to do is reload dash over to the middle of the camp and then up the camp near Lanius and we'll talk to Lanius and we're... We're going to pass all the speech checks and everything to satisfy the pacifist ending with Lanius. After talking to Lanius, all we have to do is reload dash over this gate. And while we're dashing, we're going to hit the trigger to explode the gate. And have General Lee Oliver here. And we're going to talk to him. Level up real quick one more time. And then we're going to wait for all the secure trans and yes man to enter the area and then pass all these speech checks with Lee Oliver, satisfy the pacifist ending with him, and then talk to yes man and end the game. And then if you look in the top right corner, you can see me popping off on stream. Wow, look how different I looked. Wow. Oh my god, I still had that shirt then. Wow. Wow, that was a very abrupt ending. Huh. Wow, wow, wow. Definitely took a good bit of notes. Um, about twice as many notes as I took for Speed Cucked, I think. About half as many notes as I took for Fallout 4, because that one was really long. But that was good to watch. I like. I actually really enjoyed that one. That one had a lot of charm to it. That the Fallout Four one, I feel like didn't didn't necessarily have. Um, what the hell is this video? I'm excited to get into just random thought. the The stretch of runs that I'm most excited to get into now. Hey guys, or yeah, eventually get to is. From, like, Doom to Battle for Bikini Bottom. This is the stretch of runs I'm most excited for because I feel like this is the stretch where I, like, really started to figure out what I was doing and kind of came into how I format things these days. The big one that I think is the big turning point for how I format things is Mirror's Edge. A I don't think uh, in Sekiro I did the the like cross things off as they're done, but I know that 
that might have had that, but Mirror's Edge had everything. It had um it had pop-outs in text, it had a flashback, it had r- movie clips, it had every so I'm excited to get to these two in particular are the ones I'm most excited to rewatch because I have not rewatched them since I released them. So um but yeah, I don't I don't really have much else to add for uh for this video. Again, lots of takeaways. Uh jump straight into the video. Great. Mentioned Run is done is Italian immediately after hearing Italian for the first time. Perfectly timed. Game audio being too loud. Using we a lot. Is that good or bad? Uh things being explained after the fact is bad, of course. Uh don't have time to explain now, explain later. Saying this takes up way too much precious time. Use a note on screen or something. I threw a rule in when into the middle of explaining something with reload dashes. You have to be on the ground for this. Move rules and exceptions like that to after explanations. Uh, make sure to focus both on explaining tech and what you're using the tech for. For example, spend so much time explaining reload dashing, but not at all what is being accomplished. What is being accomplished with it? Uh, can. You can respect the viewer a little bit, lol. Don't need to spell out every little thing. For example, change, we need to dash to the tops now for X and Y to, we're now at the tops because X and Y. Um, Quote, demonstrate my NA aim. Love the self-deprecation. And then the last note was, you can script lines to sound unscripted. Uh, Lots of pauses in speech, like stop us in such a fashion that would cause irreversible whiplash. Like that point. Uh, those are pretty much the notes that I had for this one. I think I will recap the notes at the end of each of these. Um, I don't take a note on everything I say because I would. This recording went on. It's an hour thirty-four in. I don't know how long this will end up being, but uh, this would be like a three-hour video if I wrote down every little thing I say, which I don't want to do because I want these notes to be digestible for me. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I will uh, see you guys next month when we will be covering the Fallout 3 speed run in 15 minutes where I am sick during this video. And I put an edit in at the beginning saying I'm sick if I sound different. That's why. It's the only time I've ever done that save for my most recent video as of right now, the Hollow Knight video. Um, I had a little pop in note at the beginning saying if I sound different, it's because I'm sick. But yeah, that's about all. Uh, yeah, peace, peace out, guys. Have an above average day.